Hey guys, uh, my name is Josh. I am a coach for Zenith Poker, and today uh, I was inspired to make this video because there was a message posted in the Zenith Poker Discord, and I was like, "Fuck it, I'll just I'll just make a video that I can link every time someone asks this question." Um, it's it's a fine it's a fine uh, topic. Um, but I think I should address it because I, like most most uh, poker pros I know, um, we have a somewhat strong feeling about this topic uh, one way or another. So um, I figured I would address this today. So uh, the question was put into the general poker theory channel in the Zenith Discord. Um, if you're not a part of this Discord, you should really consider it. There's lots of uh, really good players in this Discord, including myself, that give free advice regularly. Um, so basically, there's a newer member. Um, I won't name him because I, I don't know if like he goes by a screen name. Anyhow, uh, he says, I've been playing around with Xena Sims. Ex excellent material, by the way but would love something very simple for now. My simplified GTO plus stra simplified strategy. And then he goes into how he would build a simplified tree. Um, basically, uh, a bunch of one size strategies, um, no donking. Um, and then he would just use one 50% size uh, and three vet pots. So, there's a lot of poker courses and material out currently that recommends that you uh, simplify your strategy to either one size or range betting. You know, a, a prime example would be like range betting for a third of the pot. Uh, and there are many spots you can get away with this. And it, in some spots, I would even uh, recommend it. Um, however, in the vast majority of spots, you should be playing a more complex strategy. Um, and even if you're uh, using a complex strategy in game, there, there are still spots, even myself, where uh, I know likely the highest EV strategy is to range bet for a small size or, or half pot or, or whatever the case is. But uh, you need to know the equilibrium strategy so that you can make those deviations. Um, well, you might not need to know the equilibrium strategy to be able to make those um, deviations, but you will need to do to know the equilibrium strategy to know that the simplifications are the highest expectation yield the highest expectation. Um, so sort of what I wanted to talk about today was uh, how you should approach studying. Um, well, more or less, just like the my overarching philosophy on how to approach complex strategies uh, and whatnot. And I have not written a script for this video at all. It, this was sort of uh, by the seat of my pants. So um, forgive me if this is a little rough around the edges, uh, but it's just gonna be me monologuing for 10 minutes or whatever. So um, yeah, just strap it. So, this question comes up a lot in discords. Um, I'll get PMs about this regularly. It'll all, it, it comes up in every coaching session. Um, I constantly hear, well, can we just, um, I know I won't get check raised here, so can I just like bet small? And sometimes the answer is uh, maybe, but usually the answer is, well, you don't have enough information to be able to make that deviation or uh, how do you know playing a more complex strategy doesn't yield higher expectation? Because a lot of the time, uh, so just just a concrete example to kick things off. Like, say you open two and a half bigs on the button and the big blind calls and the board is five, five, three, rainbow. Um, a lot, the, I would say the vast majority of players, even at mid stakes, are range betting that board for like a quarter or a third of the pot, um, which is quite far from equilibrium. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, uh, the betting frequency is probably somewhere around 50 or 60 percent, um, if I had to guess. Anyhow, um, to be able to say that range betting for a third or a quarter of the pot is a greater expectation um, exploit would be to say that you know that range betting for a small size yields more than playing the check back line or big bets, which, uh, I mean, you really shouldn't have any big bets on that board. You could probably have a, a bit of half pot, um, but no big bets. Uh, but you should definitely have some check, like a lot of check backs. Um, and on a board like 553, you should have like some massive uh, turn probes, like four times the pot, uh, that sort of thing. So it, it's quite uh, a statement like it, it's quite a leap to say that range betting for a small size uh, yields the highest expectation when you could just like take all your ace high hands uh, check back the flop and then know you'll never have to get uh, 4x probed on um, or if you hit, take a hand like uh, pocket deuces you know just like a weak pocket pair and know you never have to get probed for 4x the pot um, I would say that's uh, quite a significant boost in expectation on later streets. Same thing goes for the river. I mean, um, you'll certainly get to realize a lot more equity if you know for a fact you're you're getting under check raised. Uh, and so there are plenty of spots where I'd advise uh, to do that, especially if um, you feel like you're you're weak and a lot of turn of river spots and have no idea what you're doing. Um, but I tell people when I advise these things that this is a crutch and especially students, I tell them that I expect them, I, I expect more from them. Uh, not so much that uh, you're losing money doing this, you're just not making the most. Um, because like the day that I get Forex probed on the turn uh, is the day where I will start to really consider a uh, third pot range bet on the flop on on dry boards um but to this point uh i just do not see really tough play from out of position um on a lot of streets and it does not look like that's changing anytime soon um a lot of coaches are still telling their students to bet one third for you know you know with their entire range so that's the only line they study i mean that that's hyperbole but you can tell the only line they're really comfortable in is is the one they're range bet. So, um, yeah, until people get really strong in the in the passive lines, like in the in the checkdown lines and and that sort of thing, um, I'm not gonna quit playing the line, uh, and I don't see any good reason you shouldn't either. Um, unless you, you just really have no idea what you're doing on turn and river and are just trying to, you know, stay afloat um, while you study, that's that's one thing. Um, but it, it's not not the way to get better at poker. Uh, as you move up in stakes, like once you get to high stakes, like 1K plus, you'll, you'll start to face opponents that really know what they're doing in a lot of different lines. And um, being able to take your opponents through those lines uh, just forces your well it, it pushes a much bigger edge um you know the the skill needed to beat you becomes uh, much greater um <clears throat> like i can assure you uh, most of the regs at 1k and 2k uh know how to deviate their uh checker strategy against a one-third range bet i know that that's not universal there are plenty of weak regs even at high stakes um, but you'll start to face those, especially regs that study regularly. And you can kind of tell who those are because uh, they stay around for a while. Um, let's see. Uh, what else do I want to talk about? Um, yeah, I would say try to get comfortable in as many lines as possible. Um, I, I talked about this on stream, I believe, at one point, or or maybe in a yeah, I think it was the the wet rag sea betting video. But Doug Polk said, um, you know, when he was playing sauce heads up in, in the sauce challenge, uh, one of the things that made uh, Ben so tough was that he could just 
played tons of different lines uh, that no one had really challenged Doug on in any, you know, in recent events. So, um, you know, I thought that was really interesting. And, uh, you know, I try to mention that as often as possible because it's just like th they were two of the brightest minds in poker at one point. And I think both of them pointing out that, uh, you know, being creative with your play and mixing up your lines uh, is important regardless and makes you a tougher player. Um, I like it may not, I, I know they were like the nosebleed players, like the elite of the elite. And it was, it that wouldn't become so important until like the highest of stakes, but uh, you can like, nonetheless, you will be a stronger player uh, knowing how to play a bunch of different lines, um, not just like a one slicing strategy, etc. Uh, so that's really all I wanted to say. Uh, if you guys have any questions, please let me know. Um, if you hated this rant, uh, please uh, yell at me in the Discord and we'll fight about it. Um, and if your name is Alvin and you run Alvin Teaches Poker, uh, I would like to play you heads up. Thanks for watching.